imagine trying to build a $15 commander with this disaster? Uh, don't mind if I do. So our commander today is a, a, a terrible one. It's Kangi Airy Keeper. For four mana, you get a 2-2 two -two bird with flying. And when it comes into play, if you paid its kicker cost, put X feather counters on it. Its kicker cost is two generic mana and X. So you have to pay an additional two and then however much you want to pay into the X when you cast the spell. All birds get one one for every feather counter on Kangi. Now... This means that at minimum, if we want our commander to function, we need to pay seven, <laughs> seven mana into it. Oh boy, this is going to be a bit of a challenge, but it's not the worst thing in the world because I think I figured out exactly what we are going to be doing with it. Of course, we have to play bird type if we are playing Kangi. So let's go ahead and first get into the most important section with a deck that has a commander with a huge kicker cost on it. Let's talk about the ramp section. We have a deep 15 card ramp section because of the type of commander we're running. Let's take a look at our choices. We got Core Cartographer, ETB, get a land, Scampering Surveyor, ETB, get a land. We have Unstable Obelisk. It's a kill card later in the game when we need it to be. The Warden of Evos Isle makes all our creatures with flying, cost one less to cast. We've got the Marble and Sky Diamond and Fractured Power Stone as two mana mana rocks we have access to. Honored Heirloom as a mana rock that can tap for any of our colors and also control the reanimator players. Watcher of the Spheres, all of our creatures with flying cost one less to cast. Stormscape Familiar, our white and black spells, so just our white spells, cost one less to cast. Wayfarer's Bobble to get a land out of our deck. Mindstone is another two mana mana rock. Worn Power Stone as a three mana mana rock that can tap for two. Prismatic Lens as a one mana mana rock or a, a two mana mana rock. And then uh, Commander Sphere as a three mana mana rock that can draw us a card in a pinch. Now we're running 15 ramp spells because we desperately need to be able to pay that kicker cost on our commander. It is super, super important. And in a deck like this, we also really need to focus on consistency because, let's be honest, the likelihood of bad things happening to us and our commander is pretty dang high. So let's go ahead and take a look at the draw package we are running to see how we are going to draw more cards and get through the deck. Beginning with Thieving Magpie. It's a 1-3 bird for 4 mana. Not great, but... When it deals damage to an opponent, we get to draw a card. So that is repeatable draw we have access to on the magpie, and it does have evasion. And remember, our commander in an ideal world should be lording power onto things like magpie. So this is actually inching people closer and closer to death. Then we have Viva Surgeon's Insight. We can draw three cards and proliferate for five mana. Really high mana cost for something like this, but... It does have proliferate on it, which is important for what we're going to be doing with our commander, because the idea is not to pay more than one time into that kicker cost. It's to pay once, get that feather counter, and then treat the commander as something that gives 1-1 one, one to all birds, and then proliferate multiple times onto our commander so that we can keep increasing the amount of feather counters on our commander and making sure that our birds are getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. Of course, we've got Factor Fiction as well, a very cheap draw spell. Reveal the top five, show them to your opponent, they throw them into two piles, pick one, you keep it. Wind Rider Sphinx, anytime we attack with a creature with flying, you may draw a card. Also, anytime anybody attacks with a creature with flying. So if there's a dragon player at the table, you draw a card every time they swing with one of their creatures as well. Very, very important to note. Then we have Airborne Aid, draw a card for every bird in play. Mole Drifter will let us draw two cards by evoking it for three mana. We can also play it for its full mana cost, which is another thing that we want to be able to do uh, have access to because we do have a little bit of blinking later in the deck. Then we have Distant Melody. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for every permanent you control that has that type. Military Intelligence. When you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. Reconnaissance Mission. Whenever you hit somebody with a creature, draw a card. And Tezzeret's Gambit. Draw two cards, then proliferate this is way better than the vivisurgeon's insight in my opinion in that this technically costs only three mana to get our draw and proliferate but we're running both of them because we want the draw we want the ability to get more feather tokens that's just an important thing that we want access to so when it comes to this deck the ramp is important to get our stuff out the draw is super important because we're going to be running a clunky and in inconsistent deck but we also need other ways to do what our commander is doing because it's very likely it's going to die so let's go ahead and take a look at the anthems and lords that we are running and there's actually a couple interesting choices here so first of all 
We have Gwaya here. I don't know how to pronounce that, but the Windlord costs two less as long as we've drawn two or more cards this turn, which we do have a couple ways of doing that. Uh, but it gives all of our birds vigilance, which means we can keep them up as blockers later. Kangi's Lieutenant, whenever it attacks, every creature that we have with flying gets 1-1 one, one until end of turn, so it's a mini version of our commander. Empyrean Angle gives all of our creatures 1-1 one, one if they have flying. The Steel Plume Marshal says that when it attacks other creatures we control that have flying, get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Kangi himself, not not this Kangi, this Kangi, th this one right here, not this one, this one. This Kangi says that when it attacks, all of our attacking creatures get 2-0, and when it blocks, all of our blocking creatures get 2-0. So it's got flying and vigilance. He's going to be doing a lot of both of those things. And then I've got a couple interesting cards here. Did you know that Kangi isn't the only card that has feather to uh, feather counters? Did you know that? Because I <laughs> I didn't know that until I made this deck. <laughs> Kangi is not the only card with feather counters. Apparently, Avon Mimeomancer, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a feather counter on any target creature. And if you do, that creature has base power and toughness 3-1 and flying for as long as it has a feather counter on it. We can just use Avon Mimeomancer to put the feather counter on Kangi, even if we don't pay the kick cost. Or we can just keep on increasing Kangi's ability, uh, uh, Kangi's power, and his ability to lord things out over and over again using the Avian Mimeomancer. Just a really neat card we can use. Uh, also, it throws the feather counter on a target creature. So if our opponent has like a giant uh, Eldrazi and we want to go ahead and turn that into something that's a lot more manageable, we can use the feather counters to do that as well. Also, the Soul Catcher's Airy. This card says whenever a bird is put into our graveyard, we put a feather counter on it, and all of our birds get 1-1 one, one for every feather counter that's on the Soul Catcher's Airy. So this is just another copy of our commander. This is just our commander's lieutenant. This is our commander again. It's got the feather counters. Whenever we proliferate, it benefits from the feather counters just like our commander does. That's amazing. We have Kangi, we have Avon Mimeomancer, and the Soul Catcher's Airy as ways to mess with feather counters. I'm I'm actually more excited about this deck the more I talk about it because the more I look, the more I look at these things, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. We actually have pretty decent access to feather counters, all things considered. Then we have Mirror Entity an honorary bird in the deck. It has the typing bird because it's a changeling and also pay X until end of turn. All your creatures have base power and toughness XX and gain all creature types. Now, this means that even cards in our deck that are not birds like Scampering Surveyor and the Core Cartographer now become birds and will be, uh, benefit from Kangi's effect. And importantly, most of the cards in our deck are very, very small. Kangi's a 3-3. The original Kangi's a 2-2. We have one 4-4 four, four bird here, which is, you know, big for the deck. Everything else is like 2-2, 3-3, 2, two, three, three, two three, one one the so the mere entity is going to also lord a ton of power and toughness onto the entire board as well but those aren't the only birds we have access to we also have access to bird tokens we have two bird token generators here emiria angel every time we play a land which encounter um, means that even when we fetch lands we get a one one bird token onto the board and the sky cat sovereign we can pay four mana to make one one white cat bird tokens and it gains one one for every other creature we control with flying which is going to be a big amount in the deck anyway all things considered and all those cat, uh, all those bird tokens that we are spawning should be not one ones, but closer to like four fours and five fives because of the way the deck works. And then we have just a couple of blinking creatures because they happen to both be birds. Maneldor, the Swift Savior, when it deals combat damage to a player, exile a creature that you own, put it back onto the battlefield. A great card for taking back things that have been yanked away from you with stuff like Hostage Taker. And then Yorian Nomad, the Sky Nomad. Blink any number of non-land permanents you control and put them back on the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. You can use this to hold up counter spells because you needed to get your uh, land blinks because when you blink the land, they come to play untapped. You can use this to reuse effects like Solemn Simulacrum and Core Cartographer. You can use this to make sure that if you are if you are expecting certain things to happen uh, very, very quickly, then Urian the Sky Nomad can put things back into safety if you are running it in a more Blink-dependent deck. Urian's just a really, really powerful card, especially when you run it with other Blink synergies. But for our purposes, it is a bird that has flying and can let us reuse some of our ETBs and help us make sure that our lands come back into play on tap so we can hold up things like counter spells. So... Both of these blink cards, you have some synergies you can use with them. They are not going to lie. 
pretty decent at what they do. But now we have to ask yourself another question. How are we going to keep our commander from dying? I mentioned protection when it came to our commander, and honestly, Yurian's not the kind of protection we're going for. When I was originally building the deck, I envisioned it more of a blinkish deck because I like ETB triggers, but blinking birds doesn't work as well as you'd think. There's a few cards that blink and make bird tokens, but not that many, and they're a bit overcosted. So instead, I opted for a more Voltron y style of protection. So we have an indestructible package, a hexproof package, and a phasing package we need to go over. Let's go ahead and look at the hexproof package first. Giant's amulet, pay one, equip it for two. Equipped creature gets 01 and has hexproof as long as it's untapped. Curator's ward gives a permanent hexproof, and if the permanent leaves the battlefield, if it's historic, like our commander, we will draw two cards off of it. Making our commander untargetable is super important in decks like this that rely really heavily on you defending the castle, as it were. Then in the indestructible area, we have unbreakable formation to make all of our birds indestructible we can also make them uh, have one one and vigilance if we do it on our turn in as an offensive spell and then we have Sephira Sky Blade. You may pay a single white mana and tap four untapped creatures you control that have flying so you know all of our birds instead of paying its mana cost it's a seven seven flying lifelink angel that gives all of our creatures with flying indestructible so our commander now has indestructible is protected from board wipes. And then in the phasing section, yeah, you, you, you probably didn't expect us to be able to phase out at this budget, but don't worry, we have ways of phasing out. So the Pandorica says you can choose not to untap it during your untap step, pay two and at instant speed, untap a non-land permanent you, uh, at all, just any non-land permanent and phase it out. It can't phase in for as long as this remains tapped. You can use this to turn a commander off. You can use this to stop uh, infinite combos. You can also use this for its primary purpose in our deck, which is, oh, you're going to use a board wipe or do other kinds of destruction to our commander. Uh, nah. We're just going to phase them out, and we'll untap this later and get our commander back later. And note, when you, when you phase a card, it does not regain summoning sickness. It does not enter the battlefield. So our commander, which should get bigger and bigger and bigger as the feather uh, counters increase on it, will maintain its feather counters because it's not leaving or entering the battlefield. So it's going to keep all that, and it's going to not have summoning sickness. And the feather counters do increase the power of the commander because he was errated to be a bird. So our commander is able to hit bigger and bigger if we blink him out with stuff like this and make sure that he keeps dodging damage. And then Deferi's Veil, any time a creature you control attacks, it phases out at the end of combat. You have no idea how often players spend all or most of their mana on their turns and do not have instant speed removal for what you are going to be doing on your turn. So just punching people with all your birds and then blinking your birds out of the way so that no matter what happens on the board, somebody does a board wipe, somebody tries to do targeted removal to you, none of it matters. All your cards are just blinking out and or phasing out rather, not blinking out. And because they are phasing out and not blinking out any 1-1 counters you have, any feather counters you have all of that will stay on the board but speaking of feather counters we have two dedicated ways of proliferating that are not attached to other abilities grateful apparition is a flying one one if it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker proliferate and then thrumming bird also proliferates whenever it deals combat damage to a player both of these do an incredibly good job at bumping up your feather counters, and they're really low cost, so you get to play them really early. And then we have the Jubilant Sky Bonder as a final way of protecting our commander. All our uh, our, all our cards basically have pseudo ward if they have flying. Creatures with flying have spells your opponents cast that target them, cost two more to cast. So a lightning bolt on our commander now suddenly costs three mana, which is a bit of a pill to swallow for a lot of players. But we have other ways of dealing with our commander going away or our important lords going away. We have a fairly robust reanimation and recursion package. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Tashar, Ancestor's Apostle, is also a bird cleric. Every time you cast a historic spell, so any of our mana rocks or our commander, any of our legendary creatures, target creature with mana value three or less from our graveyard gets to be put onto our battlefield. Most of our birds are three or less mana to begin with, so this is going to be an easy way to repeatedly summon birds we need to bring back. And again, it's just, he's a bird cleric on his own, so he's benefiting from all 
all the power that our commander is granting him. Karmic Guide enters the battlefield and revives any creature from our graveyard. Uh, also has flying and protection from black. You're never going to worry about that echo cost. Just let the Karmic Guide die if you need to. Sun Titan, also whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, return any permanent card of mana value three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. And then Storm of Souls, get all the creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield all at once and make them 1-1 spirits with flying uh, in addition to their other types and other keywords and then exile the Storm of Souls. So this is our, oh God, we got hit with a board wipe where it's time to crack back. All of our bird lords are coming back. So these aren't 1-1 spirits. These are like 5-5 five, five spirits and I'm going to just delete the player who cast the board wipe because they obviously need to be smacked harder than we do. So there's our ways to get our stuff back. But now for the section that I harp on the most with almost any deck I ever build, this is the removal and interaction section. This is the stuff that makes it to where you get to keep playing the game instead of losing to your opponents, casting a lot of cards. Let's begin with the Avon Cloud Chaser. It's a bird of all things. It's a flying 2-2 bird for four that blows up an enchantment when it enters the battlefield. So it's a very weak version of a Reclamation Sage effect, but because it's a bird, we get the added benefits of our feather counters and all of the other bird synergies we're using. So we get to blow up enchantments with this. If we blink it with things like Yurian, we get to activate that ability again. It's just a decent card in a bird deck, not gonna lie. Um, speaking of blink synergies, did you know that there's a seven mana card in Magic the Gathering that can destroy anything on the board? And it works really well with decks that can blink and reanimate, like our deck can? Did you know that that card is four cents and provided in almost every precon in Magic the Gathering? And you probably have like 12 of them knocking in your backyard. No? Well, <laughs> guys, it's Meteor Golem. We have Meteor Golem. Blow up any non-land permanent and opponent controls. And it's a seven mana creature. We're a big mana deck because we have to be. So anytime we can cast our commander with Kicker, we can also cast a Meteor Golem. And the Meteor Golem, we can blink with things like Yurion, our blinking bird. It's just a just a good card. Just 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 run Meteor Golem. It's a good magic gathering card. We also have Wanderer Strike. We can exile any creature for five mana, which is a hefty cost to pay until you remember that it also has proliferate on it. So we get to proliferate our feather counters. And then we have Bane's Contingency, a decent counter spell actually, because for three mana we can counter a spell, but if that spell targeted our commander, we then get to counter that spell, then scry two, then draw a card. So we get to dig potentially three cards into our deck for more things, all for the price of our opponents trying to kill our commander that has a lightning rod on it because it's a lord for all of our other birds. Resculpt gets rid of an artifact or a creature at instant speed. Serum Snare can bounce any non-land permanent to an opponent's hand, but if it's a smaller one, then we get to proliferate for it, which is just perfect. 10 out of 10. Proliferate attached to removal is great in this deck. Speaking of that, we have a four mana counter spell that can counter any spell and then proliferate for us in Fuel for the Cause overcosted counter spell, but not really when you're remembering that we are just bumping up our feather counters every single time. Reject Imperfection also counters a spell, and if it's a smaller spell, then we get to proliferate again, more ways to proliferate our feather counters and keep stacking the bird's power higher and higher. You generally want to use these counter spells as protection pieces for the commander, because I, I can't tell you, our commander is a bird made of glass and a dream. We cannot lose the commander, and we have backup plans for if we lose the commander, but you really don't want to have to rely on them. So please save the extra counter spells in this deck for protecting our commander from removal. Speaking of which, negate, counter any non-creature spell. Uh, and then we've got this lovely little card. It's a bird wizard. Do you <laughs> There's a lot of good birds in Magic, turns out. Uh, but this one says, tap to untap birds you control, return any permanent to its owner's hand. So there's a few things we can do with this. If we are using this offensively, we are taking problematic things off the board. Our opponent has a flying blocker. Goodbye. Our opponent plays a ball as a citadel. Goodbye. It gets any permanent return to a hand. Uh, our opponent tries to swing at us for game with a Voltron commander. Goodbye. Or alternatively, if we have a big board built up of little birds and our commander's out with a single feather counter, but it's late game and we need to win the game, use the Keeper of Nine Gales, bounce your commander to your hand, and then cast him from your hand with all of your mana into the kicker so he comes down with like 10 feather counters. At that point, you should be winning the game because all of your birds just got, you know, bird hoof behemothed. So, there's a few ways to use the Keeper of the Nine Gales. Just keep him 
in mind. And then we have Generous Gift, blow up any permanent of any kind, and then the person who we blow up the permanent for gets a 3-3 green elephant token amazing piece of removal that everybody should be running in their decks if they haven't. And then we've got a couple board wipes. And the board wipes I've chosen for the deck are specifically picked because they synergize so well with what our deck is. So let's start with Harsh Mercy. Every player chooses a creature type, destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type this way. So yes, you lose the ability to hurt other kindred and typal style decks. However, for three mana, you get to say, I don't lose my birds. I keep my birds. And so your birds live and everybody else's things die. So like aristocrats players that tend to have a lot of differently typed creatures, storm players who have a lot of differently typed creatures, like all of their creatures will just be blown up except for one. You, on the other hand, you lose nothing. Like what are you, what non-bird are you losing? Meteor Golem. And then of course we have Time Wipe, a Azorius destroy all creatures removal. However, it also says return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So this is another way to reset our commander. If our commander doesn't have feather counters on it, if our commander doesn't have enough on it, we can use this to wipe the board, put our commander to our hand, and then sink all of our mana into it later on. It's just a really golden board wipe for the type of deck that we are playing. But finally, we have to get to the section where we talk about lands because your lands are the things that allow you to cast cards in Magic. We're running 11-11 on islands and plains because the deck is so, so close on its mana pips. And then we've got in the dual land section, Command Tower, Port Town, Irrigated Farmland, Skyclad Expanse, and Prairie Stream. Remember that the Irrigated Farmland and the Prairie Stream both have the ability to be grabbed out of the deck with anything that grabs planes. Then of course we have our land fetching section because we do have a landfall trigger in the deck. So it's good to make sure that we have ways to abuse that. Evolving Wilds can fetch a land. Terramorphic Expanse can fetch a land. Shire Terrace and Promising Vein both come into play untapped and can fetch a land. Esper and Bant Panorama can both grab the lands that our deck needs while also coming to play untapped when we don't need them to be functioning for anything else. And then we have Myriad Landscape comes into play tapped and can get two lands from our deck onto the battlefield. So we can use this to make sure that we have access to ramp even in our land slot and then we've got something special we have a couple utility lands too two of them to be specific karn's bastion is a land that lets us proliferate so we get to just get more feather counters using this no matter what our opponents do with our <laughs> with our board states so that's just absolutely fantastic and then we have seaside haven um real talk i didn't know this existed until i started talking about this deck but uh seaside haven you add one to your mana pool, pay t uh, or you can pay two, tap it, sacrifice a bird, and draw a card. So our bird tokens now just become draw pieces we have access to. I, I didn't know this was a card. I didn't know that we had sacrifice birds to draw in Magic the Gathering. But I, while building this deck, I found that out while doing research for it. So that's interesting. Uh, also... Because of this, maybe I should do a video on how to do research for these kinds of decks because there's all kinds of weird stuff I found while looking up how to build this thing. But anyway, that is Kangi Airy, uh, Airy Keeper. This is a bad commander we are trying to make good, and we are trying to make it good within the $15 restriction. The entirety of the deck is available as a deck list under the video, and we managed to get the entire deck up to $15.17, with 80 of those cents being just Kangi himself. But you know, you could pay... <laughs> You could pay $23 if you wanted a foil version of Kangi, or you could just take like a like a marker and scribble over it and just make him look kinda kinda foil from a from a squinty eye distance. Maybe. <laughs> Do whatever you want with this particular bird commander and hey I figure that, that that little not challenge that was dropped into my Discord was worth actually trying to flex and go, you know what? You handed me garbage. I think I can make that garbage good. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And as always, everybody, insert in the video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. And they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Nabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you. Sagitta, I'm not saying that part. And Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. 
you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.